Greetings, I'm John the Spirit. I have made so many machines, and welcome to New Omni Factory Super Shorts. More accurately, I've made absolute oodles of things in order to create machines, including but not limited to two basic assembling machines, one 16x LVCF, one cluster mill, two alloy smelters, two compressors, one electric furnace, four basic wire mills, and a fluid extractor. Uh, sorry, also a macerator. Why have I made these, you ask? I'm going to need them in order to automate electronic circuits. I've been busy training up models, so I'll have lots of different types of pristine matter. But I am going to need to upgrade this PPC system right now to have two alloy smelters so that I can run all ten simulation chambers that I need to be running. To do that, I'm going to need to make some limited item filters, and for that purpose, I'm going to need Z-Logic controllers. I've already collected six zombie heads, six blocks of red alloy, and six electronic processors, but I need a couple of other things, including silicon wafers and solarium ingots. In order to get silicon wafers, I need to use a cutting saw on silicon bools, which I can get using 32 silicon dust and one tiny pile of gallium dust. This is easy, the advanced cutting machine is not quite so easy. The most complicated bit is the diamond saw blade, which requires a cobalt brass gear. How are we to get cobalt brass? You can craft cobalt brass dust from brass dust, aluminium, and cobalt. Brass dust from some copper dust and zinc, and I explained how to get zinc in a recent episode. But where are we to get cobalt dust? We don't exactly have the ability to craft cobalt ore. And you can get it as a second byproduct from pulverizing, but in order to get access to the second byproduct, we also need an advanced macerator. So what we'll need instead is to electrolyze cobalt dust. That requires an advanced electrolyzer, but I believe we made that in the last episode. And by electrolyzing cobalt dust, I mean cobaltite dust, and we can get cobaltite ore as such. Three cobalt ingots, which will turn into cobaltite dust. Um, sorry, apparently if you smelt cobaltite, you actually get cobalt ingots. So it was a prophecy when I said cobalt ingots on accident. So we don't have to go through that complicated process anymore. And I'm getting the brass I need. Cobalt brass dust. I'm going to craft one diamond dust into four small piles, as opposed to nine tiny piles, by putting it here, and then surround a cobalt brass gear. One advanced cutting machine. Now to stick 32 silicon dust and one tiny pile of gallium dust into our LV blast furnace in order to create, very, very slowly, the silicon bull we desire. Meanwhile, we must also create solarium. Solarium can be alloy smelted from gold and soul sand. Soul sand we can get by giving sand and hellish matter. An immensely tiny amount of water and silicon bowls will produce us 16 silicon wafers. You can also use lubricant or distilled water, but we don't have the fish that I want for lubricant yet, so we'll see. By the way, I got these zombie heads from a loot fabricator. Behold, 5 Z-Logic controllers, 5 advanced item filters, 10 comparators, and 5 limited item filters. And now it's time to improve our alloy smelter system. Instead of having one alloy smelter with its two robot arms connected to filters on pulsating dust and clay, we're going to create two alloy smelters. Now we're going to shift right click our limited item filters to open them up and put in one pulsating in the dust. Note, you can increase the number by left clicking again and decrease it by right clicking. And then we'll put in our clay. So now the limited item filter believes it can only insert one pulsating item dust and one clay into each inventory it's connected to. Once we set the limited item filter section to insert, we'll see that we get one clay and one pulsating dust in the alloy smelter. And of course, I'll set both to extract always active on round robin mode. Now, to start automating our electronic circuits, we're going to need a number of metals, and the type of models I used I'll list. For example, we have the zombie model, which will produce for us iron, and we have the gas model, which will produce for us silver. The slime model will give us slime balls, which we can smelt into resin. The spider model will give us copper, and the skeleton model will give us tin. The creeper model will give us coal. I'll set my zombie matter to automatically produce iron. You can place blocks in the cutting machine to get plates at a slightly faster rate most of the time, or even a much faster rate. And I'll set the rest of the pristine matters to create the metals, or in this case the slime ball and the coal that I wanted them to. And now it's time for our machines. Although I'd first like to make a mechanical crafter, which has the caveat of requiring a resonating redstone crystal, which we can make using ender shards, which are crafted from ender pearls, and restonia crystals, which come from redstone and atomic reconstructor. Also, they need compressed crafting tables. To automate electronic circuits, let's just go through the items one by one. I'm going to start with fine copper wire, and also fine silver wire, because what they take is going to be the same basic recipe. Let's set down our 16x CEF, which will output 16 amps and requires 16 amp cables in order to run without burning the cables up. I have 14 such cables right here. Took me a bit to make them, but it's fine. 
We will set our four wire mills in this order. This wire mill will be accepting copper ingots and will turn them into copper wires. And it has its auto output on the left side in order to auto output into this wire mill to produce fine copper wires. I'll turn on its auto output as such and give it copper ingots in its basic item filter. Well, this extract will be on always active. I'm doing the same for the silver wire mills here. I'm also going to need tin alloy foil, which will require a cluster mill, a compressor, and an alloy smelter. We will set up our alloy smelter compressor cluster mill system like this, with auto outputs to the left, of course, on each machine. This alloy smelter will receive one tin and one iron on a limited item filter. And this cluster mill will extract always active. To make rubber, we're going to need an electric furnace and a compressor. The electric furnace will accept slime balls and turn it into resin, and will be on an always active system. Why do I have this electric furnace outputting using an item conduit instead of auto output? Because I'm going to need resin in order to make the circuit boards that make phenolic circuit boards. When I listed the machines I needed, I forgot to mention the basic chemical reactor I'm going to need to make the phenolic substrate, and so actually I still have to make it. I'll be using a macerator to make coal dust for the resistors, and a fluid extractor to make fluid tin for the circuit, not to mention my two basic assembly machines, which I'll be putting the proper filters on soon, and once I have the extra materials, my chemical reactor. I'm actually going to set this tin alloy fluid extractor to auto output to the right, and set this assembling machine to be my circuit assembly machine, so I don't need to put down enter fluid conduits right now. We'll set this basic chemical reactor's filter to coated circuit boards. Unfortunately, I'm two limited item filters short of what I actually need in order to complete this system, but once I have electronic circuits, it'll be much easier to complete the system anyway. Unfortunately, I don't have a tree farm, technically, so I'm just going to create a drawer that has a bunch of slabs and stick all of the slabs into that drawer and attach it to my network. This should be enough for a long time. I'm moving the fluid output hatch of my pyrolyse oven to this side so that any phenol I get from it I'll be able to route more easily and directly to the chemical reactor that will be creating my phenolic substrate. You can use the scroll wheel to change the number of items in a limited item filter, especially if you don't have the item in your inventory. This is for the resistors. Now I've hooked up my machines to the main line vendor IO conduits, and I'm starting to extract always active on my loot fabricators, and for example, my alloy smelter just got iron ingots in it. My copper wire mills are now running. Slime balls are turning into rubber, is turning into rubber sheets. It's worth noting I'll be transporting rubber to two different machines, and so I'm going to want to set this to round robin, so it doesn't just shove all of the resin into one machine and onto two machines like it should. Mechanical crafters from Ender.io are quite nice. Once they're programmed with a recipe, for example a capacitor, when they have all the items they need in their inventory, they'll automatically create items in their output inventory. It has some other helpful options. You can change how redstone controlled it is. It will also check adjacent inventories to see if those inventories have the items that it needs. So we can actually remove tin alloy foils from this limited item filter because it will automatically extract them from the cluster mill. I'm going to set this pyrolyse oven to automatically input coal so that it will start making phenol automatically. It's filling with coal even though it's entirely on the other side from where the coal is actually being produced. It's very nice, Ender.io. It won't run permanently because once one of the output hatches fills up, for example, the fluid output hatch with phenol, then it will stop working. By the way, in order to prevent the mechanical crafter from completely filling its output inventory, I'm going to put a bunch of cobblestone into it. And then I'm going to put an item filter on the extract so that it will only extract capacitors. Excuse me, let me just put those in this way. Let's watch as this cluster mill creates four tin alloy ingots, and this auto crafter automatically creates capacitors. There we go. We can also observe that this assembling machine is slowly filling with tin from the fluid extractor, and we've gotten a good amount of resistors from our assembling machine. With the power of electronic circuits I've been making, I'm going to create my electronic processors so that I can make my last limited item filters. This mechanical crafter is going to receive birchwood slabs and rubber from its limited item filter, and it's going to make coated circuit boards with cobblestone to prevent the buffer from becoming too big, and a filter to ensure that only coated circuit boards are extracted, always active. A fluid filter is made with paper in a bucket, and it will allow us to filter phenol into our chemical reactor. You'll notice that because this is full of phenol, uh, this machine says it's idling, even though it has enough coal and steam in it to do its thing. Now I'm laying my fluid conduits, and I'm setting the fluid conduits to insert on brown with a filter of phenol, and I'll extract on brown, always active. Phenol is now being used to make phenolic substrate, and if I set this to extract always active, phenolic substrate will be used to create more electronic circuits. And now I have a theoretically endless supply of electronic circuits. It will last about as long as my slabs do. 
and it won't run quite constantly, but it will give me enough electronic circuits to tide me over until I can make a better system using the powerful refined circuit, um, which takes some ingredients but makes four refined circuits per set of ingredients as opposed to one electronic circuit, and it is the best LV circuit. This is basically our next goal. However, there are many steps to take to get there, so we'll start going through those steps in the next episode. As always, if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. I hope you enjoyed, and God bless you all.